Harry was uh, from the, the, the Dalles and, and um, you know, came to Portland from there. And so he was really you know, an Oregon guy in a sort of deep way. But he also spent quite a bit of time in New York. Being an artist at that time uh, was kind of akin to being a monk. And uh, uh, you know, many, many uh, artists were not married. They sort of lived a very solitary life. And they you know, went to New York and came back. Um, and you know, studied at the Art Students League and whatnot, and you know, befriended artists. And, and there was sort of a, a kind of network of these monks, you might say. And, and, and Harry Wentz was you know, a very important um, member of that sort of uh, uh, elite group. I want to talk a little bit about Harry, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Anna Crocker, because uh, the two of them are incredibly pivotal. Harry played um, uh, an incredible role in you know, the sort of founding of the, of, of the museum, um, uh, the modern museum, you might say, and was incredibly influential on uh, Pietro Belusky, the architect. This painting is at um, uh, Niakani on, on the coast, uh, which is uh, um, um, you know, basically pretty much directly uh, uh, west of here. And it has a very iconic mountain. This is a dune, um, uh, and you can see Niakani in the background. And uh, a few years after uh, Harry painted this painting, um, he uh, collaborated with the architect A.E. Doyle to build a house out there. Uh, so Wentz's cottage um, became, uh, which was you know, just um, kind of down the edge of, of, um, uh, of Neocani Mountain overlooking the ocean. It's actually an extraordinary site. Um, and it's, it's an interesting work of architecture because it's, it's really it's a house, but it's also a loft. If you go inside it, it's, it's uh, you know, double height. Um, and there's a sort of mezzanine level. And it has this really interesting um, uh, uh, doorways that open out uh, to the ocean. And that is the o only um, uh, facing view of, of the ocean or through these doors and a little balcony. And it's very Japanese. And once was a student of Japanese art and, ja uh, and Japanese architecture. And uh, this was a place, um, uh, Niakani at the time was kind of the, the uh, cultural leap, the sort of intelligentsia's uh, home away from home. Uh, and, and there was you know, a number of, uh, of, of folks from Portland who had cabins out there. And there was actually a train line that ran out there. Um, and uh, uh, so they would all sort of gather out there. And it's an interesting period, particularly, I think, for women at this time, um, because um, Anna Crocker is really uh, part of a, a, what I sort of call um, a proto-feminist group. And she studied um, with uh, um, um, Arthur Wesley uh, Dow at the Art Students League. And of course, he was like the teacher of Max Weber and Georgia O'Keeffe. She's one of the, the, the city's first typists, interestingly enough. But she was working for um, William Ladd. Basically, Ladd fired her from the typing job um, in order that she could become uh, director of the mu museum. When she came to the museum, she was the second director. Henrietta Failing had been the, the first one. But when she came, there was, a, 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 there was a two, two employees, a janitor and a page boy. Crocker was, as I said, was very, very progressive. And they were doing this you know, uh, um, thing here of really bringing in a lot of progressive art that was, you know, if you read the newspaper articles at the time, it's sort of some uh, are, are kind of celebratory and some are sort of shocked. And, and, and she was you know, totally into you know, sh you know, sort of shocking people with the art. So with that, um, I, I would like to move uh, into um, the actual uh, galleries. And we're going to you know, walk through um, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the first wing of the museum. And then we'll head outside and, and talk a little bit more. But we'll sort of, there's actually um, two phases. Well, uh, we're standing in what was the third phase of, of the museum, which ultimately became the school wing and now um, further galleries. But, uh, the first two wings was the air wing, which is sort of the bar of the front of the gallery, and then, uh, and then the Hirsch wing on the, on the side, and the sculpture court kind of connecting them. And, and the sculpture court is a really an, an, an important space, and I think in many ways um, inspired by uh, 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 the space at the, uh, at the Wentz Cottage at Neocani. So this building, 1932, a date that you might know also as uh, uh, the date of the International Style Show at the Museum of Modern Art. So it's very interesting. You could look at this as, as being, you know, kind of participating in that dialogue because, you know, it looks, you know, in, in, in certain superficial ways a little bit like, um, you know, Mies van der Rohe or uh, Le Corbusier or any number of architects who were exhibited in, 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 in that show. Pietro was Italian, and there's a lot of Italian in this building. 
Um, and what is wonderful about it is how exquisitely it's brought down to just the most minimalist expression. He was trained as an engineer, and so he had a very pragmatic outlook toward architecture. And, and um, you know, he, um, uh, you know, was, you know, of course, very young and very idealistic and very hubristic, you know, really. I mean, if you look at the, the uh, fascia and that sort of little top molding along there, the cap, um, you know, again, this is just so delicate. It's just so precise. It was Willamina brick, and it's a, it's a slightly longer brick than uh, is standard. But the mortar was specially made so that it would actually minimize the um, you know, amount of difference, the, the, the contrast between the two. So that it really created a much more uh, monochromatic facade. Ribbon windows, this is something uh, that's you know, sort of on the avant-garde in, in, in Europe. But you're not seeing anything like this in the United States, maybe on a, you know, a few industrial buildings. Um, but you know, all of it was about the quality of light inside. But Pietro was actually kind of critical of, of the international style. He really felt that the building needed to be rooted in the place and, and, and in a really important way. And so as much as, as uh, you, know, you might look at some of the, the, the historic details as, as being um, you know, concessions to his you know, Georgian-minded uh, uh, board members, there's also uh, a way of incorporating them uh, in, in order to create a very subtle relationship of the building with its setting. You know, for instance, the stairway. Museums at this time tended to be often on hills, and, and if there wasn't a hill, they would sort of boost them up so that you had this kind of processional experience of rising uh, you know, to the sort of calling of art and whatnot. And this has a very direct relationship with the street. It's not really re real modernism. You know, but it's a, it's a great transitional piece, is how he describes it. This building also um, uh, kind of launches Pietra's career in many ways. It's published in 1933 in Architectural Record, and as the Depression hits, it's you know just really bad times. There was no really no work here, and so he went back to Europe for a while. But he he managed to get a board member to send him to an international uh, uh, conference on museums in Madrid, in which he. He's kind of a hot shot, and this building marks a, a, a real transitional point. Pietro, of course, goes on to design many regional modernist houses and an absolutely incredible suite of churches that you can see dotting uh, around Portland and, and down to Cottage Grove. Each one is just a, a beautiful piece of architecture that is really about place, but interpreted through this functionalist aesthetic that really is pioneered here. And many of those churches are built out of uh, Willamina brick as well. It's a kind of a great moment, I think, you know, for Portland and for the museum in terms of just seeing this level of sophistication brought to a genuinely original idea of what a building should be, what a museum as an institution should be. And um, with that, I'm happy to take questions. I hope you get, you know, have the opportunity now to sort of enjoy uh, particularly th these first two wings of the museum in, 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 a, in, a, in a different spirit that you might have uh, uh, previously. So thanks a lot for coming.